happen. Hey guys, how's it going? This is you say D Wheelie here, and we are back with more FGO. And in the last part, we uh, believe we uh... okay. So we had a run-in with the fairy knight Gwen after we had to head to the we headed to a ranch where they were holding humans prisoner. Well. Well, they're trying to let humans grow up so then they can actually use them for their own purposes. And then, uh, we were, we were confronted by Fairy Knight Gawain, and then we lost Tristan. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of other crazy stuff happened, and then we, once we went to, uh, Gloucester here, we had an auction to buy out the so-called Child of Prophecy, even though Altria Caster is here with us, but we want to. But we had a feeling it was uh, it was Mash, but it turns out it wasn't Mash. It was Muramasa. Yeah, Muramasa was captured and caged, put in the cage, and sold. And we bought his freedom from the Fairy Knight Tristan because uh, she was kind of a bitch. And then Altria, Altria was had a really big grudge against her and actually took her down. Because in the Glow Sister, everyone became level 1. And Ultra had the better Magecraft. And then we met up with uh, Murian, the ruler of Glow Sister. And we found out she has some ulterior motives, though. But for the meantime, she's not going to interfere with us and stuff, too. So there's that. In any event. And meanwhile, Matt, we also learned that Mash herself was, uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah, Mash herself was being taken to, uh, Sheffield, yeah. Sheffield was where Mash was. And she became the queen, she became the queen who, and pretty much married to a big lion dude named, uh, wait, what's the lion dude's name? Like, damn, I forgot. And yeah, they had their own little hijinks shenanigans and uh, even showed a little memory where Mash uh, pushed them out pushed them out of the castle and he got sent flying and broke the castle walls. Because um, you know, Mash is a demi servant, so he's got monster strength. And Yeah, because he tried to force her force himself on her and then <laughs> stuff happened. But then, yeah, then he's like, oh shit, I made a huge mistake. Okay. And then now they're... The forces in Sheffield are getting ready to try and attack uh, Camelot. And the Queen's forces, though, but... Little did they know, one of their buddies... One of the buddies of the three mercenaries and... Yes, yes, I did what? What did I do, Dev? What did I do? But yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, turns out, never let Oberon do stuff for us, because he said, oh, you'll find, uh, you'll find your friend Mash in Gloucester, but instead of, <laughs> instead of auctioning off Mash, we had to buy Muramasa. Yeah, Muramasa somehow was overpowered by, uh, overpowered, and then, he passed out and got caged up and sent us off to Glowcester here, so. <laughs> God damn it, Muramasa. God damn it, Oberon. But in any case, let's see if we can find Mash today. You did what you said just now? What did I say just now, Dove? Please, enlighten me. Uh. I'm buddy, I'm buddy, I go sleepy, z, 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 z. But what did I say? What did I say? Hmm. How long until we get to Wales? You just said it. Why do I need to repeat about losing Mash and getting scammed by Oberon? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, see, Mash, we got separated from Mash, and now we tried to go find her, but it turns out... She wasn't the one up, up for auction, it was Muramasa. So how long do we get until Wales? Hmm. 
Well, we're taking the scenic route instead of the main road, as so, so as to not stand out. So at this pace, I'd say we'll get there tonight, as long as we don't run into any trouble. Huh. Wonder why it's not full screen here. Is that a... Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Is something wrong, Altria? You've been weirdly quiet for a while now. Hmm? I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to make you so nervous. Hmm. Is there a way... Wait, it was full screen a moment ago, right? Maybe it's just this scene here? I've been getting a really bad feeling like someone's been watching us all this time. I just get the feeling the carriage is going to flip over in about five seconds. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm Red Rabbit, the most elegant wind like Fay Horse around. I would never let a carriage I was drawing tip over, especially when with passengers in so. What the snort? What is it? Are we under attack? Everyone, get out of the carriage! Hang on, we ain't under attack. The carriage just ran over something, is all. What happened, Red Horse? Are the roads that bad out here? No, it's just... I'm sorry. I was just writing a poem while gazing up at the sky. And I didn't notice the large number of fairies collapsed on the road until it was too late. This is incredible! It's awful! It's incrawful! There are one, two, three, six of them blocking our way. Uh, we're alive. We're alive. Please <laughs> help us. Our cargo just uh, began acting up and attacked us out of nowhere. Hey ho. We're not hurt too badly. In fact, we can. We probably look completely fine. But the cargo took one of us away down past that hill to that isolated cave no one would ever see unless they were looking for it. Please, you've got to save him. You nice suckers. I mean, people who wouldn't turn your backs on a fairy in need, right? <laughs> Sus. Oh, yeah. Not suspicious at all. The hell over there? Got it. Come on, everyone. We need to hurry before it's too late. Wait. Seriously? Ugh, there's a fine line between nice and being gullible, you know. You know, I'm actually kind of impressed she managed to survive this long. Watch the carriage, Oberon. No problem. Good luck over there. Okay. Okay, look, it's, it's full screen over here now. In the battle menu. Like, I can only use up the three servants, though. Do 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 Well then He doesn't have his NP battery. Alter Ego Exclusive Skill, def Apply Divine Spirit... Okay, let's do it. Okay, he still gives him his NP battery. Oh, 
さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、
full screen again. Hey ho, I don't know what I would have done if you guys hadn't come along. That's the last time I go shopping in Gloucester. I should have known that that bargain set was too good to be true. You mean, he was actually in trouble? I guess so. Now I feel bad for not giving those fairies a fair shake, no matter how suspect they seemed at first. Are you alright? There aren't any other fairies who were taken away, are there? Nope. Just the seven of us. No eighth fairy around here. I gotta say though, you guys sure are strong. And by you guys, I mean the redhead. You, on the other hand, were crazy out there in a whole different sense of the word, lady. You were throwing out so many explosions, I thought you were gonna blow me up along with our escort. Yeah. Next time you ought to take a page from this young Mrs. Playbook. <laughs> she threw a bunch of stuff at the cargo too, but she never hit me once. Going wild's all well and good, but you gotta be aware of your surroundings too, especially when there's a hostage involved. Anyone else would be sicking a lawyer on you right about now, you know. Uh, I know, you're right. I'm doing my best to overcome my clumsiness, so I hope you can be patient while I work to improve. You bet. I'm rooting for you, lady. At least you've got guts, and that counts for a lot. So, uh, if you're feeling all right now, would you mind if we got going? Oh no, it's okay. No need to thank us. It seemed like it'd be way more trouble than it's worth. You sure? Now that I made you help us out, I thought I'd take it easy by sticking with you guys for uh, the rest of the way. But, alright. Besides, we gotta head home and report to the boss that we're done taking out the trash. Ugh. And here I thought we could rely on those escorts we bought. Thank goodness you guys came along to help us out. Thanks, skullable looking lady. Wow. You were taking out the trash? You mean, the Camelot's pit? I thought soldiers were supposed to be escorts for that, since more stand to show up near the pit. We would have gone with the soldiers, but they say they don't have time for escort missions these days. That's why we got escorts from a beautiful lady in Gloucester instead. She said we could have them cheap since uh, she couldn't get the fine tuning right. Hmm. What's this about trash? Koyanskaya. So she sold them junk she knew was worthless, huh? That fox woman sure is a piece of work. Luckily, no more showed up near the pit. Guess they're all gathered around Norwich now. Man, sometimes I really worry what's going to happen to the fairy Britain. Between Gawain, the fan clan's biggest troublemaker, and Tristan, the queen, <laughs> the queen's pet psycho. Uh oh. Oh no, frames. Frames. Please. Stabilize. There we go, thank you, thank you. The only decent Tamlin of the bunch is Lady Lancelot. Maybe I should make a break for the North. Nah, what am I saying? I could never do that. We're the Seven Merry Brothers, Lady Aurora's faithful servants. Hey ho, hey ho, it's back to work we go. Thanks again for everything, you guys. You watch out for the Moors too, you hear? <laughs> They're just like, uh... Hmm, I see, I see. For the record, it's not my fault. We, for the record, it's not my fault we didn't get there today. It's all on Altria for dragging us into yet another rescue. You do all understand that, right? Also, do you naturally attract trouble, Yusuku? Are you just unlucky like that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Eh, this did help me get my bearings in terms of using my blade and all. Fairy Britain isn't like well, other Lost Bells I've seen so far. I finally figured out how tough my blade needs to be. Your magecraft ain't half bad either, Altria. I got no idea why fairies here say your skills ain't worth much, 
but I do know they're a great fit for me. My scabbard's feeling smoother than ever with you around. Glad you're on my side. Uh, thank you. Same here. I s yeah, because they're, they're art servants. I see. Unlike fairy soldiers, Muramasa doesn't just use his own magical energy to fight. He also uses external enchantments as naturally as though they were a part of his own body. True, Muramasa's fighting skills are definitely a cut above the rest. You said he is an alter ego, right? Does that mean he's not a pure servant? Well, uh, is it okay if we tell this story, Muramasa? Sure, go ahead. Now's as good time as any, Yusuku. Besides, I don't need anyone coming to me later complaining about how, was, how I was secretly a bad guy all along, or how I could betray their trust, yada yada. Well, it's a long story, but here goes. Brother, tell me about Shimosa. So, he's a servant mixture this foreign god made? And he's actually been fighting against Yusuku and Chaldea up until now? Basically, especially in Olympus when he pulled off something crazy right at the end. In fact, Muramasa, that reminds me, you are strong enough to cut Atlas's spirit origin in half. Yet you failed to assassinate Queen Morgan, and some other fairy handed your ass to you. Can you explain how that works? Because I don't get it. Nothing special to it. I'm just an alter ego who's optimized for killing gods. And that's only because the foreign god imbued me with divine spirits who are good at that sort of thing. Apparently, one of them is a blind god of war who was responsible for Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. The others, well... Kind of a wish fulfillment of mine. Don't ask. My point is, I'm not exceptionally strong or anything. I just don't have to use magical energy to kill gods. So Olympus was perfect for me and Scandinavia. Well, Scandinavia would have been rough. You can figure out why. Skahawk Scotty, I think she was called. If this alter ego version of me had met her, I might have flown into a genuine rage. I know the blind god of war would have had words to say about all of her. <laughs> I know the blind god of war would have had words to say about her of all gods being fooled. Anyway, there you have it. I'm pretty useful when I'm up against divine spirits, or in worlds where divine spirits are calling the shots. Hmm. So if you're strong against gods, that also must mean. Now I see. I had a feeling this was the case, but you just helped me clarify it, Muramasa. The land of the Fae has no concept of religion, which means... Yep, there are no gods in Britain. Though I have no idea this world end up like that. Or I have no idea how this world end up like that. It's damn peculiar. The whole, you know, the whole world's ruled by fairies, but there ain't, uh, ain't a trace of gods, the greatest mystics ever anywhere. Well, that only makes sense, don't you think? I mean, it's only humans who desire gods. Fairies can do anything they want on their own, so they don't have to rely on a higher power for help. So of course their society isn't going to think up gods. Hmm, you know, that is a good point. I'll have to write all this down later in my next message to Caldea. I wonder what Holmes is going to have to say about it. I um, don't know much about these god things either, so I can't speak to that. But you are still Yusuke's enemy, right? I'm glad you're helping us now, but, um, are you really comfortable working alongside your enemy? You don't have to worry about that, Altria. It's like I told you back in Glow's sister. Now that you've saved me, I'm gonna stick with you, child of prophecy. It's easier for me that way. I ain't usually the one to find fault with my own work, but at least this one's a job I can finally get behind. So you're not fully on board with the foreign god's job, then? Are you freaking kidding me? Hell no! Damn thing's a pain in the ass! Even now I still have no idea what the hell the foreign god even is. She just summoned me without asking, mixed some divine spirits into me without asking, and forced a bunch of work I never asked to be a part of, part of on me. I've always been a maker of weapons, so I know my hands weren't the cleanest to begin with. But at least when I was alive, I swear to the Buddha that I never went down the wrong path. Of course, now that I got some other things mixed within me, I don't have a right or wrong path anymore. So if nothing else, I'm gonna make sure I do good work on any job I take on. It's the least I could do with Muramasa.
Then, does that mean you've taken on the job of helping Altria now? Isn't that what I just said? What are you grinning about? You're more mean-spirited than I would have guessed. I see. In that case, we'll be happy to work with you. We can use all the help we can get now, especially from a heroic spirit we are already acquainted with. Once again, even if it's only in this lost belt, I'm glad we're on the same side, Sinji Muramasa. Thanks. Since I'm saving the price for this job myself, I'll be help helping out in any way I can. Anyway, on a different note, I don't really want to ask this, but as much as I dislike the guy, he was still a colleague, so... How did Limbo's final moments go? Hm. He went out a coward. Hm. I see. Alright, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that and just go to bed. Is anyone awake? They're not, are they? No, they're all sleeping soundly. I'll take that as a good sign. Uh-oh. God, I'm pretty sleepy too, but I have to stand guard. I don't know who that is. No shady looking things nearby, check. No mores nearby, check. Don't you worry, everyone. I'll make sure. Altria, stay safe. Huh? Zzzz. Did someone just fall asleep next to us? Are? Are, are? Is that someone in our group that was falling asleep? Or did someone just sneak up on us and then just fell asleep next to us? Okay, we gotta, we gotta be fighting berserkers. Get right into it again. Okay, back to my Muramasa. Here, welcome to, my, no, welcome to my domain, the Autumn Woods of Wales. Doesn't look like there are any towns or villages here. Oh, good. It's Lord Oberon, everyone, come quick! Lord Oberon has returned! Please, Lord Oberon, please tell us about what you saw outside. Thank you for the warm welcome, everyone. As you can see, I brought guests with me today. This is Yusuku. He watches over things just like I do. This is Da Vinci, the cutest genius I'll ever meet. This is Muramasa, who will probably be kind enough to make us all sorts of useful things. And this is Altrio, the child of prophecy. See? I told you the child of prophecy will be willing to come all this way to this isolated neck of the woods. Now, do you believe I was telling the truth? What do I do, Oberon? You don't have to do anything. They're just glad you're here. Oh, but don't try to hug them, no matter how cute they are. They're not used to being touched, especially by outside fairies. These fairies are straight out of a picture book. Now, this is what I imagine the land of fairies would be like. Come on, fairies are fairies, right? I don't see anything special about... Please! Please make me a helmet. I want to be a soldier. A soldier! Well, I guess they're a little different. I can tell what it's saying, but... What is it, little guy? You want a helmet that fits you? Yeah, alright. Anything made for humans obviously won't fit you at all. Hey, Oberon. Might I sit up a workbench somewhere? 
be my guest. Oh, but just stick to leaves and twigs uh, for your materials, if you don't mind. They don't actually want to be soldiers, they just want to play pretend. <laughs> I got it, don't worry. I'm not going to make anything real. What about you? Who are you? Are you Oberon's friend? A real friend? That makes you our friend, too. Please help him. Please help Oberon. I can tell they're friendly, but that's all I can tell. We're welcoming all of you here. None of the fairies who end up in these woods understand suspicion. There are no imitations of human society here, but we can at least put you up in tents. Why don't you all kick back and relax while I go see what's happening outside? I'm counting on all of you to take care of our guests, okay? Don't worry, these people are all nice. None of them are going to hurt you. <sighs> okay, everyone, ta-ta for now. I'll be back tonight, so make sure to save some dinner for me. Huh? Hang on, no, but on. At least tell us how we can understand what they're saying. And he's gone. I mean, at least we could tell these fairies are being welcoming to us, but... Indeed. I have no idea what these Welsh fairies are saying, neither. I also noticed Lord Oberon didn't bother to introduce me. That hurts, honestly. I wonder why. Is he just absent-minded? Uh, I'm uh, sure it just slipped his mind. <laughs> oh crap, I forgot he was here too. <coughs> Are you hungry? Are you hungry? If you, you're like a Lord Oberon, you must get hungry too, right? We'll feed you, we'll feed you. Welsh chestnuts are yummy, yummy. They say they're going to feed us, and the chestnuts no less. That's amazing! Talk about a forbidden treat! You can almost never find sweets in the south thanks to the restrictions, but here we have a loophole! Restrictions? Oh yeah, Mike said that only upper class fairies have access to confectionaries. Apparently the queen forbade processing fruits and such... <laughs> forbade processing fruits and such, so sugar is hard to come by here. Lady Aurora once gave me a bite of some kind of dark colored bar. A chocolate bar. But honestly, I prefer carrots. They have much more natural sweetness. This way, this way. Tell us about Oberon. Tell us about Oberon. Looks like the dining table's over that way. I still can't tell what they're saying, but if they're going to treat us, who are we to say no? Good point. That meal was delicious! What she said. It sure was. They're the most gorgeous grapes I've ever eat, ever seen by far. And not only that, these fruits even have mystics in them. That was a great way for servants to recover magical energy. Maybe I should take a few with us for the road, or send some to Holmes as a souvenir. Chomp chomp. <laughs> There's still an extra plate left out. Is that for Oberon? Should we leave it for him? They're here! The Black Darks are here! Run, hide! You snoozy lose! Huh? That's weird. Why they all run up in trees and hide in hollows? Huh? Mm. Why they all run up in trees and hide in hollows all of a sudden? Chomp. I see some black dogs over there, Chomp. So they're probably trying to hide. Oh my gosh, come on, we have to get rid of them! It's the least we can do to pay them back for this feast! I was just thinking the same thing. Black dogs are terrifying, but these poor fairies have no way of fighting back. Well, we're not going to let anything happen to them now that we're here. Come on, everyone! Let's show these dogs they're no match for a hare! Are you sure you're not actually a servant?
装員構えてくださいそこに至るはあなたの研さん気づきに気づいた刀塚八重垣作るは戦時の刃知ったら成仏していきな下がってなもう<笑>そこに至るはあなたの研さん気づきに気づいた刀塚。はい。気づくは戦時のやりだ。知ったら成仏していきな一斉に前に打ち合うぞこの一人に仕事をする。Hmm. Alright, let's try it again. <laughs> Hey, Bond Five. <laughs> Why was that incredibly powerful enemy doing mixed in with the black dogs? Probably just some fairy they bit who went mad from excruciating from the excruciating pain. Are those different from the Moors? Yes, fairies become moors when they lose their purpose and shine. That is, when their lives become meaningless. And when they are infected with meaninglessness, the bite on, and when they are affected by meaninglessness by touching other moors. But fairies who become 
so focused on their purpose that they lose sight of themselves produce endless magical energy to the point that they're no longer able to maintain their forms. I guess you could say that their fairy's gone bad. That's what happened to those fairies in the Nameless Woods. They were so happy to have a human that they couldn't keep their desires in check anymore and ended up killing their own friends. They did it! They won! Bortigan! Bortigan! Oberon is gonna be so sad! Oberon's gonna be so happy! He has good friends now! Wait, why is he gonna be sad? Well, the fairies are happy. We must have done a good thing driving those creatures away. Alright, since it looks like we're going to be staying here for at least a few days, why don't we set up camp? Especially since there's no point in worrying about what's going on outside now that we're here. So let's just relax and recuperate while we wait for Oberon to get back. No battles here. Okay, be right back, folks. Uh, oh, excuse me.
Sorry about that. Let's continue. I also have corn dogs. No, oh, having fun. After dinner. Hmm. You know, this is something that I've been wondering about for a while now. How do fairy families work? I saw plenty of siblings in Salisbury, but I didn't see anyone who looked like a parent and child. Well, of course you didn't. Fairies come into existence independently of every, any, anyone else. The only siblings we have are when multiple fairies with similar attributes decide to call each other that. Or when they've all decided to stick together from the time they manifest, like the seven fairies we saw yesterday. But that's just how fairies live their lives. Okay then, what about children? So is there no procreation? Mm, they used a the stork. They say Tam named Tristan is supposed to be Morgan's daughter, right? So how does that work? <laughs> Tristan, Morgan's daughter? Good one. No, that just means she's the queen's successor. I guess in human terms, We'd say that Queen Morgan adopted Tristan. The only children in the fairy world are next to virgins. Well, the only children in the fairy world are the next virgin of of you born after you die. Let's see. Okay, for example, let's say we have Spinner Fairy A here. Spinner Fairy A lives for a hundred years and goes to sleep, having fulfilled their purpose. But that doesn't mean Spinner. That doesn't mean the Spinner profession. Or that fairy's way of life disappear from Britain. So right after Spinner Fairy A dies, Spinner Fairy B is born. Fairies refer to this relationship as predecessor and current generation. I see. So then, does the current generation inherit anything from the predecessor? Things like genes, lineage, records, names, or some other kind of property a human would pass on to their kids? Not really. Like I said, Fairies are born on their own, so they don't have any connections like that. That goes for predecessors and current generation fairies, too. Powerful fairies can hold on to their records. Uh, records, memories, may be better here. But in general, the next generation is a completely blank slate. However... Since the current generation has the same role, their abilities and appearance do resemble their predecessors to some extent. That's how the Spinner Fairy knows that they're a Spinner Fairy no matter where or when they're born. There are also times when a fairy who resembles the current generation is born, while the current generation is still alive. It's rare, but when it does happen, the new fairies are treated as the current generation's son or daughter. This is also why fairies who use magecraft are sometimes referred to as Morgan's daughters. Here in Britain, Queen Morgan used to be the only one who used magecraft. But now we have Tristan who was given magecraft and na named her successor. And Altria who was born using it. From the fairies' perspective, both are the same type, of, same type as the queen, hence Morgan's daughters. I see. So that's why that Tamlin hates the Child of Prophecy so much. She's also a bitch. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. I guess the rumor is that she, or I'm Queen Morgan, Morgan's daughter. Hmm. 
Not exactly, Altria. It's not using Magecraft that makes you Morgan's daughter. It's that fairies who use Magecraft can become Fairy Britain's king. At least I think so. That's the whole reason Morgan gave Tristan Magecraft. It's her way of saying you'll be the next king. Rule over Britain as you see fit. I expect that was her way of trying to derail the prophecy to make sure the child of prophecy wouldn't make, take her throne. But then you and your natural magecraft show up, and now Morgan... Or rather, Tristan is all, what's the real one doing here? That's probably why she went to pieces at the auction house. She couldn't handle the terror. You think so? I didn't think I was scaring her that much. I do, yes. Anyway, a confrontation with Tristan is pretty much inevitable. But don't worry, just relax and take it one step at a time. The fact that you use Magecraft proves you're the child of prophecy, and that you're destined to defeat the Queen. No matter how powerful Morgan may be, or how formidable the Tamlin are, as long as you're the child of prophecy, you'll be Britain's savior. Just do what needs to be done, and the prophecy will be fulfilled. We're just here to help you. As long as you're around, Britain can, and more importantly, will be saved. Even if some of us end up dropping out along the way. What? Why would you say that? Hmm. It's no use. I can't sleep. Too much on your mind to sleep? Well, there's no need to stand. Here, have a seat. I saw you when I was heading out to gather intel. Mind if I sit next to you? Great, don't mind if I do then. Say, here's an idea. Maybe you'd feel better if you told me your story so far. I'm sure you have a lot to say about everything you've seen and done before you came here. So, starting from the beginning, before the Lost Belts? I see. So that's the journey you, Caldea, has been on. Earth's future, humanity's existence, your survivor's guilt over the other lost belts you've been to. No wonder you can't sleep, especially given what you told me earlier. You're feeling guilty about the child of prophecy. Or maybe it's not guilt so much as alienation. Altria's about to spill a lot of blood, but that has nothing to do with you. That's been your role up till now, and you've kept fighting even when it was hard. But you never had a choice, did you? Responsibility for it all rested entirely on your shoulders. Not here, though. Here, you have to put it all on Altria's shoulders. And now you don't know what to do with these feelings. You might even be, you might even be feeling like a coward here. Since you can't forget that you have no intention of saving Fairy Britain. You may be right. You're more concerned about finding your lost companion. If something happened to M.A.S.H., you can never forgive yourself, right? Surprised? <laughs> Surprised I can tell all that? You're trying not to let it out. You're trying not to let it show, of course, but I can still see. But look at it this way. Let's say, hypothetically, M.A.S.H. were to go out into town alone and die in an accident. Would that be your fault? Is keeping her safe from all harm all the time your responsibility 24-7? No, of course not. That's not con that's not concern for a friend. That's more of a savior complex. Mash is their own person, and people are responsible for their own lives and choices. If you really respect her as an equal, then you should be trusting her, not worrying about her. Piling more responsibility on your shoulders isn't going to help anyone, especially if you're so weighed down you can't act quickly when you really need to. 
Still, based on what you told me of your journey so far, it sounds like your heart doesn't have anywhere else left to go. I'm pretty sure you used to be a lot lighter on your feet. The kind of person who lived his life how he wanted. Am I wrong? What do you mean? What I can- well, I can tell you what I don't mean. I don't mean just doing whatever's easiest. I'd say living a life how you like means finding what suits you. Finding what it is you want more than anything. And fighting for it as hard as you can, come what may. That's how you were during the incineration of humanity. Not that I was there to witness it, obviously. My point is, you and I are a lot alike. I'm guessing we both have the same role to play here in Britain. We're bystanders. As much as we hate it, you are no more the protagonist of this story than I am. Just like Oberon the Fairy King wasn't the protagonist of A, Midnight's, uh, a, Midsummer's Night, uh, a Midsummer Night's Dream. All we can do here is watch to see how things play out. Even in battle, we can't do anything more than offer support from the rear. But that doesn't mean you need to beat yourself up. At some point before this all ends, there will come a moment where you have a crucial role to play. A time when no one else is around and you'll have a chance to change how everything unfolds. Sounds great, doesn't it? So for now I suggest you swallow that worry, get some rest, and look forward to what's yet to come. So what if you're just a bystander? Even spectators have their pride after all. So bide your time, wait for your moment, and do something spectacular at the very end that not even the gods could have seen coming. Just imagine how good it's going to feel when you finally wipe that smirk off the smug face of fate itself. <laughs> Thanks, Oberon. Not too sure what that was about, but I feel better now. What's so strange about it? That's how I lived my whole life. Yusuku. There aren't many people out there who can, can explain everything about themselves. It's not like we're predictable tools that come with instruction manuals. We're living analog creatures, fuzzy around the edges. That said, everyone has at least one thing they like about themselves, right? It's kind of embarrassing to say this out loud, but... At least this, in this example, I don't think I'm a coward. And of course, you aren't either. Oh, sorry about that, Blanca. I didn't realize I'd been talking for so long. Let's go look for intel in Manchester tonight. It's about time we started investigating up north. Alright, I had better get going then. I'll see you tomorrow night. I don't want to be the only one left out of, din out of the dinner fun after all. Wait. Hmm? What is it you want, Oberon? To defeat Morgan, of course. I might not be a fighter myself, but that is why I was summoned here. Hmm? You're not talking about for humanity's sake or anything like that? Oh, now I see. Well, damn, this is kind of embarrassing, but I guess I can't dodge question after the big speech I just gave. I'm looking for Titania. Remember Oberon's queen from A Midsummer Night's Dream? Titania, the fairy queen. The only one that ever loved obstinate Oberon. I'm hoping to see her, if I can. Though, of course, I know that's impossible. Titania is a fictional character. She doesn't exist in proper human history. She can only ever exit what within the conf she can only ever exit within the confines of a story. Alrighty then. And now we have another battle, an alter ego and a rider. Go. Hmm. Uh. 
Alrighty. <laughs> Wait, why are you fighting these three? Are you, are you training Alter or something? Hey, one four. Muramasa? Why are you taking that so seriously? Are you a child or something? <laughs> no, I'm an old man. It's my job to make sure youngsters like you get a proper education at the School of Hard Knocks. That doesn't go for you, Yusuku, though. He seems he's had more of his share of hardship. He seems like he's had more share of his hardship. I gotta admit, Yusuku, those quick combat summons of yours are really something. Makes me think I'd better... Uh, I'd, <clears throat> Makes me think I'd be better off keeping you safe instead of mixing it up myself. If you play your cards right, you might even be able to beat the Tamlin. The Tamlin? Are you sure? You bet. If you throw all the servants and magical energy you've got at him, you can definitely take him. You said one of them tranced you before. You said the You said the one. You said one of them tranced you before. The next time it'll be your turn. Just make sure you've got a good victory line locked, or locked and loaded. Something like... What? Make sure you've got a good victory line locked and loaded. Something like, I ain't afraid of no Tamlin. Huh. Your weapons are made of iron, right, Muramasa? Could you, let me, uh, could you let me have some of the material? Sorry, but I'm the only one who can work that. It's basically an advance I'm paying for with magical energy. If you want to use them for yourself, I'd have to make something for you from scratch. And that means I'd have to get some iron from a mine. I think it was Norwich that controls the iron supply around here, right? I see. I guess I'll just have to track some down somewhere. And after I came up with a plan to defeat Gawain, too. Oh, am I seeing a mean streak in those eyes, girly? If you got something devious in mind, I'm game to help. 
No, thank you. Just keep laughing it up at you, Yusuke, and leave me alone, old timer. She's kind of petty, though. Huh? Looks like someone's going through her rebellious phase. Or maybe she's just like that. I'm guessing she's just jealous of our resident grandpa paying attention to me. No, I am not. I'm just being the child of prophecy. If there's no getting around that, then I might as well start taking it seriously. Start taking it seriously? Come on, you've always taken it seriously. No one here has ever thought otherwise. Oh, I see. You're worried about what Oberon said about you having to confront that Tam Lin eventually. I mean, that's definitely part of it, but... I just figure I can't sit on the fence forever. The whole idea of making a pilgrimage around Britain and ringing the bells doesn't, uh, still doesn't feel quite real to me. But the fairies we met so far, including the ones in Glue Sister, all had such high hopes for me. And of course, my whole village in Tintagel. Tintagel? Is it Tintagel, I think? Tintagel? Tint I still can't really agree on. I still can't really settle on a pronunciation. The village of Tintagel believed in me enough to raise me and send me on this pilgrimage in the first place. I'm still worried I might not be able to live up to everyone's expectations. But I thought for the time being, I could at least try being proud of being the child of prophecy. Uh, like they say, nothing venture, nothing gained, right? I mean, I still don't have any specific ventures in mind, but... You know, girly, for the life of me, I can't tell if you're full of spirit. Or a, or, or a shrinking violet. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Yusuku? I made up my mind, Altria. I'm going to help you no matter what Chaldea has to say. But what about Mash? I thought we were only traveling together until we found Mash. Of course we're still going to look for Mesh. I'm not stopping until I find her. I just want to help the Child of Prophecy on top of that. Huh? Good point, Yusuku. We haven't made our position very clear, have we? Finding Mesh is definitely our top priority, but that doesn't mean we can just leave Britain to fend for itself. So we want to keep traveling with Yoon, not just so we can find Mesh, but so that we can help Britain too. Now that we've made friends here, we want to do everything we can to help them so we can go back to our own home with no regrets. Does that about sum it up, does that about sum it up Yusuku? Yep, I'm sure Director Gordolf won't be happy about this, but eh. Sounds good to me. I'm sure Gordy would give in eventually if he was here too. So, it's not just Muramasa anymore? You're saying you and Da Vinci are going to join me on my pilgrimage too, Yusuku? Yep, and I'm sure Oberon would say the same thing. Don't worry, we expect to be generously compensated once we've all saved the day. So how does that sound, future king? Of course, you'd rather not have us hanging around. We can always go our separate way. No, no not at all. This is great. I never dreamed I would ever have this kind of help. I guess this is the Child of Prophecy's first proper alliance. <laughs> now I'm starting to feel like a king. Yay! Glad you're so happy. Well, you really are a king, so... Of course, none of this changes the fact that we still don't have any kind of plan. It's great that you're feeling motivated about being the Child of Prophecy now and all, but what do we actually do about it? Uh oh way to bring me crashing back down to reality. Couldn't you let me be happy just for a little while, Muramasa? Ugh, that's your entire problem right there. Well, as the resident old man here, I kind of have to be a party pooper, right? I heard the whole thing and I think I have an idea. It's Oberon. It's a little earlier than I'd planned, but the time is clearly right. Why is it there a question mark? I will tell you where to find the... Mm, sorry. I will tell you where the Child of Prophecy and you, her companions, need to go next. The crossroads of destiny where the Child of Prophecy's rumors shall become reality. That's right. It's time for us to go save Norwich. 
I can hear him, but I can't see him. Is that really you, Oberon? Huh? What do you mean? Oh, uh, what do you mean you can't see me? Oh, right, of course. Down here, everyone. Wait, he shrunk? What the f- Ew! Lying long distance sure takes a lot out of you, but there's no substitute for seeing things for yourself. Oh, right. You guys haven't seen me like this before, have you? I'm the stylish little speedster who races around Britain on a Sphinx Moth, on a Sphinx moth at mock speed. That's right. I'm Ryder Oberon, sometimes known as Robin Goodfellow, and the pint-sized fairy king. <laughs> How did you get so small? Oh boy. Alrighty. That was six and six done. Okay, we got... Oh, it looks like we're gonna see what Mash is up to now. Second, folks. Right, before we end, we go refill my drink. Be right back.
Alright, sorry about that. Let's go! Meanwhile, where MASH is... Oh, excuse me. Heavy footsteps echo across the northern plains. The Queen's army is on the move. Sorry, there's a bug flying around my head. A military flag depicting black flames and a mighty fortress flaps at the forefront of the army marching on Sheffield. Tamlin Gawain leads the army. Her objective is not to snuff out the sparks of rebellion, nor to neg negotiate with Bogart. There we go, Bogart was the name. Beryl Gutt, who was named the Queen's proxy only yesterday, flashes a wicked grin. This all occurred one day before Sheffield was wiped off the or Sheffield was wiped off the map. Hmm. Aren't you going to rest, Lord Bogart? If there's something on your mind, I'd be happy to listen. You can't even pour me a glass of wine. You really are a poor excuse for a wife, aren't you? Wow, alright. Well, that's alright. I can't appreciate alcohol anyway. In fact, I don't understand why humans cook their food at all. Cutting, slicing, roasting, frying, seasoning. It all seems like a waste of time and good meat to me. The Fang Clan doesn't need to act more human. And it certainly doesn't need rest uh, restaurants. Did you know that Oxford is practically full to bursting with restaurants these days? Everywhere you go, there's a wood there's a wood roses on every corner. It's a sick joke. Is it's a sick joke? Is what it is. Can you even imagine if all the shops on Sheffield, um, Sheffield's main street, were nothing but restaurants? It would be so absurd. No one would even know how to react. Yes, that's true. It would be a funny sight. Yes, if nothing else, those restaurants are good for a laugh. It would be fun to show you one. Never mind. I don't know why I said that. So, child of prophecy, I'm told you've been defeating Moors on behalf of the townspeople. I also know you've been seen fighting while wearing that armor of yours, even after I told you not to draw attention. Yes, I have. I'm sorry, Lord, Lord Bogart. I guess I'm just not fit to be your wife. Of course you aren't, you fool. You never were. Wow, alright. Oh, well, I mean, that's... Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you don't need, need me to be the wife, Mash. And yet, even though you're capable of battling Moors, you're, uh, you're afraid to wield a weapon. You never came back for that iron cylinder. Those merchants told me they found you and the cylinder together, and yet, you've never even mentioned it. It's almost as though you prefer to forget about it entirely. That cylinder rivals Morgan's sacred lance. Why would you run from such incredible firepower? I don't know. It's just something that thing feels like it could hurt everyone. <laughs> it's just something about that thing feels like it could hurt everyone. Like it could even hurt all of Britain, and that scares me. No, you're not afraid of that cylinder. You're afraid of fighting itself. Never mind. Even I did not know your true feelings. Even if I did know your true feelings, I doubt I would understand them. All that matters are your records and accomplishments. Have you still not regained your memories? I don't know if it's your calling, but I have no doubt that you are a knight. One who has been fighting a long time. And yet I've never seen you in the Queen's army before. Nor have I heard of a new Tamlin being appointed. In fact, I've never seen a fairy that looks like you anywhere. Where did you come from? Are you... are you actually the child of prophecy who will save all of Britain? If you are, then you will be forced to fight wherever you go, for the child of prophecy's pilgrimage leads down a road of blood and war. Do you truly have what it takes? Can you not only defeat the Queen, but also unify the six clans and maintain your rule over them? I... I don't. Hmm. Of course you can't. You simply aren't made for that. 
even if you were to regain your memories. Fairies are meant to live their lives how they like, in accordance with their purpose. Why would you force yourself to go through with something you don't desire? No, it's like I thought. Not thought, knew. You aren't the child of prophecy. You are no more than an imitation, a lost little lamb. I've been fighting for a long time. I've been fighting the Moors since I was born. Fighting the Moors has always fallen to the Fang clan. It only made sense. We're the strongest clan in Britain. And Woodwoes and I were the strongest of all the Fang clan. The two of us alone have saved Britain from the Moors countless times. It was those accomplishments that led to Woodwoes being named Lord of Oxford and I. Lord of Oxford and I, Norwich. Yes, I remember. You told me before that you were once the Lord of Norwich. But you never told me how you end up in Sheffield. A man named Capless put one over on me. He's taken over the Spriggan name now. But never mind that, scumbag. It's nothing you need to hear about. You know about the Caterpillar War about of 200 years ago, yes? It was the only war that made the Queen scream like a flesh-and-blood woman. <laughs> I never would have guessed that a cursed Morgan would be so afraid of insects. At any rate, during that war, Morgan gave hmm, the name Gawain and made her a knight. No one can perceive some name anymore. The Queen changed that so that Gawain became her true name. But now, no one can call her by her original fairy name until she's defeated. Woodwose hated blank and claimed and claimed that she was the daughter of the detestable black dogs. But I always admire her sheer strength. In fact, I'm part of the reason she became a Tamlin. One day I told her, If you don't want to be called a dog, you need only stop fighting with tooth and claw. Blank, heir of the precious blood from here on, and heir of the precious blood, from here on, you will fight with the greatest of swords, your horn. Ever since she's been carrying a sword with her, a sword with her wherever she went, until one day her prowess as a knight caught the queen's eye. She then became a Tamlin and became shielding fairies from the moors of her own volition. I suspect that was because she had long been ostracized as a daughter of the black dogs. That allowed her to understand how the weak feel. I made her demand responsibility from the strong. I believe the queen calls that noblesse oblige. <laughs> it seems there is no limit to, to the reach of human civilization's influence. You know, you remind me of back when she had just been born. Back then, she agonized over having been born strong and hated that she would now have to continuously exploit the weak. There's something about you that reminds me of her disgraceful crying. I see. So you still care deeply for this Gawain person? Hardly. I stopped thinking about her 200 years ago when she became a Tam Lin. What am I saying? Why am I sitting here telling you about my youth instead of my daring exploits? This was a waste of time. Forget tonight ever happened. Erase it from your memory. I'm going back to the tribunal. Okay, take care, Lord Bogart. And please try not to stay up too late. That reminds me. Why aren't you afraid of me? That? I think it's because Sheffield is such a beautiful city. And I'm told you were the one who restored it from almost nothing. Even though it's a fortress city, it puts the livelihood of the fairies who live in it first, making it a bright and comfortable place to live. I don't think I can ever be afraid of anyone who set out to build a city like that. Well, of course. Sheffield is much more beautiful than Norwich ever was. But that ends today. We'll be closing our gates as of tomorrow. Once the fight with Morgan's army begins, no one will call this city beautiful any longer. What was that, Lord Bogart? That's the alarm bell from the Sentry Tower. But why now? They can't possibly be here already. What's going on? Uh -oh. What's the situation? Don't tell me the Queen's army crossed the eastern mountains at the top of uh, Odvena in only two days. Odvena? They have, sir. The Queen's army is drawing steadily closer to the main gate. We also received a message from them not too long ago. Would you like to read it? 
No, you read it. Just summarize it for me. What did Morgan say? Well, uh, that is er. Well, what are you waiting for? Tell me. Yes, sir. It says, hand over the child of prophecy. And I will grant Sheffield its freedom. The child of prophecy? Does she mean Lady Mesh? But why? What about Norwich? Does it say anything about giving Norwich back to us? No, wait. What does she mean, grant us our freedom? Does that mean she doesn't care if Lord Bogart continues to grow his army? Rah! I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I can't really scream right now. Is that what you think, Morgan? You think our rebellion poses no threat to you? How much much do you humiliate the Fan Clan before you will be satisfied? Excuse me, sir, I have an urgent message. The sentry just confirmed that Gawain's flag is at the head of the Queen's army. Tamlin Gawain is leading the advance. Oh, who is she now? Very tricky, Queen. She talks big, but shows a Shows us she sees us as a, uh, as a threat just by sending who she did. The very fact that she would send her right-hand woman to deal with this is proof that she fears our army. She knows she can't possibly take down Sheffield while Nakhnariab is sending out troops from, sending out troops up north. So she chose to negotiate rather than to try and put us down, which means the army out there is only for show. No wonder they got here so quick. They can't possibly be armed for battle. So, which will it be? Will she give Norwich back to us, or send enough troops to dispel the Calamity Pool? I look forward to hearing which answer you choose, O Queen of Britain. I'm Lord Bogart. It isn't just Gawain's flag. Tristan and Lancelot's flags have been spotted as well. All three of the Tamlin are headed this way. The most powerful forces in Fairy Britain are all bearing down on us as we speak. What? All three of them? That's not good. You've done so fun though. All troops are in position, Lady Gawain. What would you have us do? Remain on standby till the messenger we sent to Bogart returns. Tell Tristan's forces to do the same. What is Lancelot doing? Lady Lancelot is standing by in the air. She says she'll drop into the castle once the fighting begins. The Queen's orders were to cleanse Sheffield thoroughly, in addition to Bogart's army. Everyone in the castle, military or otherwise, will be considered targets for Lady Lancelot. Fine. We don't need them lined up anyway. Tell Lancelot to drop on the, uh, on the back gate when the time comes. If they try to let the Child of Prophecy escape, that's where they'll do it. Bogart, if you open your gates to us now, this can all end without bloodshed. Don't make me use my horn on you. Look at your forces and look at ours. You're a rational fairy. You must see the resistance will be a few- Incoming message, my lady. The messenger we sent to Sheffield just returned with Bogart's reply. He says, there is no child of prophecy in my castle. All you will find here is contempt for the queen. This castle and I are one. If I should return to the earth, its purpose will also come to an end. That's all he wrote. That fool. Squads one and two, ready your siege gear. Sheffield's ramparts will be difficult to break through. It may even be more formidable than my foul weather. Be prepared for casualties as high as 20%. Yes, my lady. We're, we are prepared to accept any fate in the name of the Queen. Damn you, Bogard. Your reach exceeds our grasp. Did you really think her Majesty would give Sheffield special treatment simply because it keeps Nochnariab in check? You are a fool to underestimate us. We don't need to ambush Nochnariab to keep Camelot safe from her. No truly capable leader in your position would have made such a grievous error in judgment. Your time is over, you old fool. All that remains now is for me to put you out of your misery. Assemble the troops. Prepare to hold the castle. Send word to Nakhda Riyab. Tell her we can hold out on our own for two days and to send backup before then. 
At Bogart's command, Sheffield began its true battle. Many high-ranking fairies said no one... Uh, said no... Uh, 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 uh. Many... At Bogart's command... Yeah, many high-ranking fairies said no one told them all three Tamlin would be there, and that they should just give up the Child of Prophecy. But Bogart quickly put an end to their dissent. It wasn't clear whether he did it because he didn't want the Child of Prophecy to protect him, or because he wanted to save her as a last resort. Whatever his reasons were, his decision was correct. If they had given up the Child of Prophecy, every fairy in Sheffield would have been cruelly slaughtered that much sooner. Report from the Sentry Tower. The enemy's siege weapons are burning the ramparts. They've already burned through one layer of tree bark. The Earth Clan fairies are using oak trees to reinforce the walls, but at this rate they won't last a night. They need immediate backup. The soldiers stationed atop the ramparts have their hands full fending off the invaders from scaling the walls. We outnumber them now, but they're better trained than we are. It's only a matter of time until they outnumber us as well. So far the fighting has yet to reach the town thanks to our soldiers' valiant effort, but... What was that? Did Gawain just break in on her own? Lancelot is attacking from above. She's destroying the barracks. It's no use. She's too fast even for the Wind Clan fairies to track. There's no way we can shoot her down. Get her down to the ground even if you have to destroy one of the barracks. Lancelot is like a bee. All speed and no power. As long as we can ground her, I can easily... Now what is it? Did he just fire a cannon at us? No, sir, it's Gawain. She's using her galatine on the main gate. She's already burned through the gate's bark down to the tenth layer. We'll never be able to regrow it in time if she keeps hammering on it. Damn, that girl. What about the castle grounds? Are the soldiers information? And no, sir. The citizens are so panicked they keep getting in the way. Some fairies are even starting to riot, demanding that we let them out of the from the rear gate. Whatever you do, do not open the rear gate. If one fairy makes it out, the whole thing will collapse. Never mind the throne room, Captain. Get down there and suppress those riots. Yes, sir. Let's go, you lot. There's too much chaos at both the ramparts and the castle. We can't fight everywhere at once. Please, Lord Bogart, tell us what we should do. You're the one who said we could fight off the Queen's army here. Are you going to send out the Child of Prophet? I know, I know. Damn it. We just need to put put out one more... We just need to put out one of those fires, yes? We've got a Magecraft cannon of our own. Let's see what kind of power the Child of Prophecy truly has. In rage... Bogart began to run to the iron cylinder mounted on the castle. Uh, when Bogart uh, ran to the iron cylinder mounted on the castle keep as fast as his legs could carry him. He didn't think that alone would actually change the battle's course. At best, he hoped it might provide an opportunity to turn the tide. Little did he know that fateful pull of the trigger would be the beginning of Sheffield's end. The attack would transform the battle from a siege into a scene of pure annihilation. Yeah, he, does. he can't fire the black bullet. Be right back, folks.
right, sorry about that. Let's continue. I'm going to support only. The shaft of light. Hmm. The shaft of light that all but exploded from the castle changed everything. The 600, uh, the 600 Royal Army soldiers who had been laying the siege to the gate vanished in an instant. The Sheffield soldiers who had been fighting valiantly atop the ramparts died on the spot, blood gushing from their bodies. Right. Those fairies merely, those fairies merely, ne uh, so, sorry. Those fairies nearly near the beam's path breathed their last peacefully as they had only fallen asleep. The ramparts, which hadn't so much as budged when struck with Gawain's galatine, were now completely melted down, barely leaving behind it a husk. Even the Tamlin who had been standing before the main gate could no longer be seen amidst a haze of white smoke. Lady Gawain, she's... For just a moment, terror gripped the battlefield. Both the Queen's army, who had suddenly lost their will to fight, and the soldiers at Sheffield, who would normally have welcomed the turn of the tide, reeled at the nightmare that had sprung up around them. Amidst the white smoke, only a single figure was still standing, though his breathing was shallow and ragged. Huh? Ha! <laughs> Lord Bogart. <laughs> that was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Behold, my soldiers. If this isn't fortune smiling on us, I don't know what is. We can win. We can still win. Not even the Tamblin can touch me while I have this. Wait, is he using the black barrel? This... With this, I can obliterate anything that stands in my way, and not just Morgan. I can rid of that fool Woodwose knock Nariab from the north, and the Calamity pull threatening Norwich. This is incredible, just magnificent! <coughs> Though it was right in front of him to see, Bogart remained blind to the truth. He failed to realize how odd it was that the dead Queen's soldier... Oh. That the dead queen's soldiers had vanished without a trace, he failed to notice his own soldiers' painful deaths on the ramparts. He failed to see the fairies who had collapsed near the castle, and the soldiers right next to him who had fallen like withered trees. <laughs> the child of prophecy fell to her knees in despair, aghast at the horrors her sins ha had brought about. It wasn't that. It wasn't just that she had inadvertently harmed the townspeople she cared so deeply for, was that the fact that she had brought that cylinder here, that was part of it. Was it her inability to stop Bogart? Certainly that was part of it too. More than anything, she felt her greatest sin was her own weakness. Her failure to consider the effect she had on those around her, or the reason she was here in the first place, using the loss of her memory as an excuse. Now who's next? Where is that accursed Lancelot flying about? Here, child of prophecy, come here. You can wield this even more accurately, right? You see that blue bee buzzing up around, buzzing up around, blah, 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 blah. buzzing around up there. I want you to shoot it down along with the queen's army. <laughs> Bogarn turned oblivious to what was happening to him. There, he saw. Why? Why must I harm this beautiful world? Forget about a mash, come on. We need to get out of here. But what about Lord Bogart? We can't leave you here leave him here alone. Don't you worry about me. You really are weak and useless, aren't you? I have no need for a queen who weeps over war. Go on, take her wherever you like. There you see, Bogart made his choice. He'd rather stay here and kill his enemies. 
What do you want to do? What can you do? I... I have to help the townspeople escape. Okay, I'd rather just make a break for it myself, but if that's what you want, I'm game. Now come on, let's hurry. See you, Bogart. Don't worry about my tab. I'll be taking your bride as my payment. Bogart, please be caref careful. Lady Gawain, you're all right. I can't believe it. Hmm. You can't believe what? Oh, you mean that light round? That was just a beam of hot magical energy. The only threat it posed was a bit of iron poison. It was crude and used without heart. It can't even compare to a single strike from Queen Mor from High Queen Morgan. Uh. Now what are you all doing? And you call yourselves the cream of Cra uh, Camelot's crop? Hurry up and resume your advance. That fool Bogart just destroyed his own town's greatest defense. Now's our chance to seize the castle. Pay no heed to the ones fleeing. All you need to concern yourselves is with Sheffield's castle. The Queen's army poured in through the front gates as the soldiers of Sheffield tried to fight back. Some of the townspeople hid in their homes, holding up their hands in surrender when the Queen's soldiers broke in. Others saw, saw that the front gate was lost and scrambled to make their way to the rear one. They use the black barrel again? Tamlin Gwyn remained steadfast at the front gate, glaring at the castle keep a kilometer away. To Bogart, who had become utterly enthralled by the cylinder's sheer destructive power, she may as well have painted a target on herself. You think you can match us, power girl? You think you can distract me? Cursed Knight of Morgan, let's see how tall you can stand after I fire another shot straight at you! Distracted by his elation, Bogart failed to realize that the weapon's poison was eating away at him. The only things on his mind were his animosity for Gawain, the Tamlin he despised, and admiration for... Blank's magic, uh, magnificent leadership. <laughs> that little girl has become quite the fine knight, he thought, as his lips curled into a smile. At that moment, he recalled the other girl's tears just a brief moment ago. For the first time in all his life, Bogart, fo Bogart found himself on a battlefield, wondering one simple thing. Why? Why was the girl crying? Why had she been so upset? What reason could she possibly have for such sadness? Try as he might, Bogart could not understand. What am I saying? This is war, and I have a weapon that can defeat my enemy. Weapons exist to be used. What more is there to consider? Sheffield belongs to me. I'll never let you bastards have so much as a single citizen. Even as he grew dimly more aware of his tr uh, that his true anger lay not with the Tamlin, but with his own cowardice. Bogart placed his increasingly numb finger on the trigger and prepared to fire his last shot. It looks like the castle is still safe. Can we evacuate the townspeople here? We could, but then there'd be nowhere left nowhere for them to run. They'd all end up either captured or killed. If you really want to save everyone, then we'll need to open the rear gate and secure an escape route for them. Sure, it'll basically hand Sheffield to the enemy, but that was going to happen sooner or later anyway. The townspeople may not have a lot of great options available to them, but whether they die to the Queen's army or head north to become Nochnariab slaves or get lost in the Night Call's domain, it should be their, at least their choice. Now come on, Mash. Let's head to the rear gate. Just make sure you run for it if you see a Tamlin, okay? They're here for you, after all. I will. Let's go, Hepatrot. Please open the gate. The Queen's soldiers are right on our heels. If they catch us, they're going to tax us. 
I don't have that much longer left to live. There's no way I'll survive another taxation. Calm down. We can't open the gate. Besides, it wouldn't change anything. It won't be long now before Lord, Lord Bogart sends the Queen's army packing. Return to your homes and await his victory. Those of you without homes head for the castle. We guards can't stay here any longer either. We need to hurry to the front gate. We don't have time for this. We can't go back to our homes. All the fire raining down from above would burn us alive. And the Queen's soldiers are already occupying the castle. Our only choice is to run for it. Nakna Riyab's army is practically next door, right? I'm sure they'll help us. After all, they're the King Clan. Now get out of our, get out of our way, you useless Cretans. Lord Bogart can't save us. He's the disappointment of the Fang Clan. Yeah, Bogart failed. He's too weak to be a lord. He had no business challenging the Queen of all people. You bastards. Wait, Rob? Oh man, things are at the boiling point over here too. First is the Queen's soldiers, now we have to worry about a possible riot too. It's not like yelling at the guards didn't do anyone any good, though I do get why they're doing it. Damn it, this way's blocked too. Bogart sure covered his bases. How about the sewer wag? Can we make it out from there? No dice, Rob. There's a wall blocking our way here, too. I know they were probably just trying to seal off ways an enemy can sneak in, but this is overkill. Crap. Then we really don't have a way out of here. What about the rear gate, Wag? Do you see how they opened it? Of course, Rob. I've been keeping an eye on the guards here, just like you told me to. There are levers hidden behind the third pillar in both the left and right guardhouses. All we gotta do is raise and lower them. The two of us should be able to manage it. Oh, but be careful not to step on the sta uh, step on the stake at the lever's foothold. It's a safety mechanism that'll make the whole thing stop working once it's broken. Well, that's great, Wag. I'm impressed. You've really grown up. <laughs> really? You mean it? Then does that mean I can make it on my own, like Winky? Eventually, sure. But don't worry about that unless I get captured. Okay, let's sneak in and get that gate open. These Sheffield fairies have treated us a lot. Of, oh, have treated us to a lot of good booze. The least we can do is repay. Oh crap! It's the Queen's army. They're already here. Forget the gate, Wag. Stay out of sight and keep an eye on things. Damn it! We're a little too late. This is gonna be a bloodbath. Huh? But 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 uh, why can't we open the gate then? Wouldn't that help? Don't be stupid. Didn't I teach you to? Didn't I teach you to play it safe? What's the most important thing in the world? Your life, right? and you've got to take good care of it. After all, what's the point of having something valuable if you don't save it for when it really counts? <laughs> yeah, you're right. We can't sell ourselves short. Okay, then let's stay here in the sewer until... Rob, look over there! Someone's sending the Queen's soldiers flying! It's... it's a niece! A niece is here to save us! I told you she's... I told you she's called MASH now. Anyway, change of plans. Let's sneak into the guardhouses while she's got everyone's attention. Woo! Alright, way to go, MASH! That's our child of prophecy! The Queen's army bore down on the panicked fairies crowding around the rear gate. The guards advanced to meet them, but could not make it through the, through the press of so many bodies. Soon the Queen's soldiers were set upon the fairies, trying to desperately escape. Once the first blood was shed, there would be no going back. Oh, sorry. Just them flying around my face. The fairies were too frightened to think straight, so the Queen's soldiers regarded them as violent dissidents. Soon the rear gate would become a bloodbath from which none could escape alive. Unless, of course, she had something to say about it. Okay, I can't really scream. God, man, she's like one-shotting them. Lady Mash, what are you doing here? I came to help. Can you open the rear gate, Loot? Uh, I'm not authorized to make that call, but then again... If the Lord's Lady wishes to pass through the gate, I guess we have no choice but to open it. Thank you. Not at all, my lady. I was this close to doing something I would have regretted forever. Some guard I turned out to be. Someone help me open the gate, and hurry! Don't let the Queen's army into the guardhouses! 
Don't let them touch the safety mechanisms either. If you see anyone suspicious in there, kill them. I've located a fairy that seems that appears to be the child of prophecy, moving in for the kill. You four with me. The rest of you dispose of those fairies. Don't let a single seed of descent escape. Oh no, you don't. You're facing me and me alone. If it's bloodshed you want, then it's bloodshed you'll get. I am Tamlin Galahad, the Knight of Sheffield. Galahad? Huh? I am your enemy, and I'll stop you all here, right here, right now. So she got her... Fairy Galahad? Huh. Four of them. それはすべての傷、すべての怨恨を癒す我らが故郷、権限せよ、ロード、ケメロット、倒します。
I should finish you. Woo! All right. Everything's burning. I gotta fight a lancer here now too. It's open. The Child of Prophecy opened the gate for us! I don't see any kind of... Uh, I don't see any of the Queen's soldiers outside. The side chance to escape! No, wait, isn't that where Lancelot is? Alright, looks like our work here is done. Come on, Mesh, let's run for it too! Don't worry about the city. Bogart can handle it. I'm sorry. Whatever, uh, whatever else you, could say about, you can say about him, he's still a great knight. He knew this might happen when he began his rebellion. You don't have to share that responsibility with him. This is his last stand, no one else's. Have a trot. Oh, crap. I think that's going. No, that's a lot. Escape is not an option. Your only options are to surrender and accept, accept capture, or to die here and now. L l Lancelot! It's Templin Lancelot! Ah, ah, we're all gonna die! Eee. What? What is that? A, a fairy? A Templin, you say? For real? So that is the child of so that's the child of prophecy. Fine. This is this is annoying, but moving in to capture her. But first, what was it you called yourself? Galahad or something? That's quite the name you threw out. Oh crap, here she comes! Get ready, Mash! Don't hold anything back against her! By the way, why did you call yourself Galahad? Who even who even is Galahad? Is he some boyfriend of yours you never told me about? Damn it! Uh, I don't know who Galahad is either. It just sort of came out. 
At any rate, everyone, please try to escape. I'll do my best to hold her off. Uh -oh. Oh boy. I don't think we have the... The chops to beat Gans uh, Lancelot. I said Gancelot because of Vanguard. Oh, and the music here, man.
Gonna target next. Uh -oh. uh. Damn, right. Working on her. My strength is fading. I see. And here I thought your shield might be something special. But the round table's protection is useless against me. My mystics are just too powerful for it. Huh? That explosion came from the castle keep. Lord Bogart! Oh crap! She totally wants to go save him, doesn't she? I'm glad she doesn't look as defeated as she did a second ago, but come on! Oh, a second win? You're tougher than you look. I see why you chose Galahad for your name, at least. But it's no use, child of prophecy. This ends now. You're not going anywhere. We don't need two children of prophecy. I guess it was just too soon for you to call yourself a Tamlin, or to assume Galahad's name. Goodbye. Who did that? Ku? Ku Hulon? Sorry about that, but that girl there is an acquaintance of mine. I didn't want to get involved, but I'd also rather she not die on me. Please, stand down, Lancelot. Do that and we can all go home, no fuss, no muss. Are you the wolf who's been watching over me all this time? Hey, that might have been, yeah. You knew? So much for the mysterious shtick. Your instincts, no, your powers of observation are just as keen as ever. Wait, is this the same one from uh, Fuyuki? At least, I'll handle Lancelot here. Don't worry, I can at least buy you enough time to escape. Uh, Alright, thank you, robed person. Wait, the hell? I thought you were gonna run outside. Why are you heading back into the castle? Hey! I knew it. But what can you do? That's Mash for you. Hey, Grimmer. It's, it is you, right? Yeah. Sorry to run since we haven't seen each other in forever, but thanks for this. Sure, no problem. I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely not going to survive this, but oh well. Aw oh, no. So, mind facing me instead. It might cost me my life, but I can at least send you flying out of the castle. Grimmer, I see. You're Grimmer the Sage. The savior from the Fair is familiar. Now you're a servant who's been summoned to the era of the High Queen, and you still haven't learned. Her Majesty said I should dispose of you, so I will. I don't suppose you have any last words. Oh sure, but it'd take way too long to get them through. Uh, get through them all. Besides, we're both outsiders in Fairy Britain anyway. So let's just have some fun and not worry about the rest. Well, it's our boy, Koo! Uh, no.
<clears throat> wow, so you even deflected that one. I guess your skin really is tougher than Gawain's. But unfortunately for you, I don't care how tough your skin is. I only care what's under it. I want to touch your muscles once they're all exposed. Gushing blood. I want to make a bell from your guts. Well, go on, big guy. Scream for me. Scream from your insides being twisted all around. You'll be just like an old doll nobody wants to buy. Oh, fuck. Hey, watch it, m'lady. You almost have blood on me. I'm about to see an old friend here, you know, so I gotta look my best. Oh, please, you were practically drenched in blood just a little while ago. Anyway, check this out, Barrel. See how miserable Bogart looks? First, a little charm to project his soul into his likeness, and... Look, look! I can move him however I like! First, we bend the arms, then we bend the legs, and... <laughs> this is the ugliest marionette I've ever seen! The spell you taught me is hilarious! Oh, that one? That's called Fetish. It's a bit beyond me, but since you're a fairy, it's obviously no problem for you. If anything, it looks like a perfect fit for you. Even I didn't think you were going to take it uh, take to it this much. Fetish? What a silly name. Okay, I'm going to make this my noble phantasm. Whoever I use this on will be into my plaything before they even know what's happening. They'll be mine to do with as I please before they even know what's being done to them. Ooh, this is awesome. I love it. Face left, face right. Put your hands together in prayer. <laughs> I can't think of a more pathetic way to die. Damn you, Tristan. I'll never fall to the likes of... Ah, just shut up and die already. How the hell are you still alive when your heart's been torn to pieces in anyway? Whoa there, milady. Don't finish him off just yet. Just keep it cool for now. I still need him alive for one last thing. At least for a little longer. Well, speak of the devil, guess your wifey really loves you, huh, Mr. Lord? I'm kinda jealous. Uh, no. I forgot how pervy he is to, to mash. Bogart, are you okay? Why? Hang on, mash! Can't you slow down a- Ah! What the hell? Why is Bogart all bloody and floating in the air? Did that girl sitting on the throne do this to him? Sorry, still trying to catch the bug, and it keeps pretty fast. Hold on, Bogart, I'll get you down from there. Whoa there, not so fast. If you want Lord Bogart to live, you better not move a muscle. You did come here to save him, right? How about we start with a nice, peaceful discussion? After all, you were never too big on fighting and stuff, right, Mash? You... You know who I am, don't you? But I'm afraid I don't... Have your memories... Have your memories... Wait, wait, How do you... Have your memories right now? Wait, have your memories right now, right? Oh, yeah, I heard. What was his name again? Mikey? Minky? Funky? Whatever it was, he told me all about it. Man, you sure have been through a lot, huh, Mash? I can only imagine how hard it was for you. But don't you worry. My name's Beryl Gut, and I'm here to rescue you from your hardships in this strange land. Don't be fooled by this pretty face. Behind it is a mind filled with information about your past. Now come on, let's get let's go back to New Darlington and ha have some fun, just like we used to. Don't trust him, Mash. He's bad news. Lancelot was a bad matchup for us because he was just too strong. But he's just bad. No matter how strong or weak he might be, he reeks of blood down to his soul. I feel the same way, even if I did know him. I can still tell that I shouldn't trust anything he says. Ouch, that hurts, Mash. What happened to you? First you lose your memories, and then you lose your way? Oh, right, I see. You must have gotten mixed up with the wrong kind of fairies. Hey, I don't blame you. If I'd been, pal uh, palling, if I'd been palling around with a bunch of broke-ass bandits, I'd probably have trouble trusting people, too. But hey, don't worry. I'm still the same. What happened to the fairy who told you about me? Tell me 
Where's Winky now? I can't tell you that. I mean, I don't know or care where fairies go when they die, right? You... Huh? Who said you can move? No way! And she broke out. Ugh. That, that hurt. I've heard of throwing people against a wall, but I've never had a wall thrown against me. Yikes. Guess I better do something before you literally turn me into mincemeat. The truth is, Mash, neither me nor that Tam Lin there can beat you now. Not when you're a Tam Lin named after Galahad. The greatest knight of the round table ever produced. So I'm afraid we've got no choice but to play dirty. Do it, Tristan. You got it. Like this, right? See? Your beloved Bogart is dangling outside the castle walls now. All I have to do is release his thread and he'll hit the ground head first. Normally a little drop like this wouldn't phase him, but since he's hanging on by a thread in more ways than one... I think it'll be enough to finish him off. Now, how much longer are you going to keep making moves on my man? Phew. Thanks, Lady Spinal. I swear, how did you exactly know what I had in mind? You're a genius. Of course I knew, Beryl. This is us we're talking about, and I know just what's going to happen next, too. What do you want? It doesn't seem like you're here to capture the Child of Prophecy. B, that is. Well, technically, we did come here to kill the Child of Prophecy, but whether we do or not kind of depends. See, we're actually in more dire straits than we might seem. Even together, me and Lady Spinal are no match for you. And you'll never forgive us for tormenting Bogart there. So if he dies here, it's obviously you will be the next ones to bite it. If you went nuts, there's not so much we can do about it. I suppose you're right. I don't think I can stop myself either. Right, which is why I propose a little wager. I'll let you in on a secret. I'm Morgan's master. Oh right, guess you don't know what a master is now, do you? I'm kind of like Morgan's husband. If you kill me, both Morgan and her army will lose at least half their strength. So any child of prophecy worth her salt or shield, as it were, would never pass up the chance. And like I said earlier, not even the two of us combined could stop you now. While I hate to say this after I went through all the trouble of putting this show together, it would all be for nothing if we fought. Or at least that would be the case if you didn't have our little insurance policy here, understand? So you want me to let you two go in exchange for Bogart's life? You want me to choose between killing you and saving him? Hmm. No, I don't think we need to bother with that. Uh. And splat. The thread keeping Bogart in the air snapped. Barrel Gut was right. He did know the girl well. He knew that. He knew that with the thread gone, she wouldn't hesitate to dive after Bogart to save his life. Bogart. See? Even when her memory's gone, she's still the same old mash. As far as I'm concerned, it won't matter if she never gets her over her you know, it won't matter if she never gets over her amnesia. Beryl Gut's laughter echoed throughout the ruins of the castle, after he had finished snickering at the girl's desperate rescue attempt. Okay, now we just have to bring this black barrel thing back with Hey, Lady Spinal? What happened to the giant three meter long cannon that was just here? Don't tell me it fell too. Seriously? Huh? Sorry, I was so absorbed in you that I didn't see what happened to it. Uh. Oh well, guess I can't blame you for that. Besides, no biggie. Alright, Lady Spinal, I think we've had enough fun for one night. What do you say we head back home? Are you sure? What about that MASH girl? I thought you really wanted her. Well, sure, but remember how Morgan said to leave her alone. Besides, no one but Lancelot could take her now, anyway. I'm just gonna have to think of another way to make her mine. I see. So she's stronger than I am. Ugh, that little brat. I was so excited to tear her apart. Is it okay if I go kill the fairies here? I need to blow off some steam before I die from the stress. Oh, don't worry. We just have to change our approach. 
Remember what I told you before, if you can't hurt the outside, rot the inside. If MASH wants to rescue people as a child of prophecy, we'll let her do just that. That way, it'll be just a matter of time until she feels her conscience weighing down on her. The more she goes around passing herself off as the child of prophecy, the more despondent she'll end up. That's how things seem to work here in the land of the Fae. Hmm. That's rough, buddy. In span of a few seconds it took for the two figures to fall from the castle keep to the courtyard. The girl made a desperate dash down the castle wall, cradled Bogart in her arms, and turned to absorb the brunt of the impact herself. <sighs> Though she knew it was only the only thing she could do to keep Bogart alive, she hadn't accounted for his weight being added to her fall. And even she couldn't help but experience a short bout of dizziness upon standing up. I'm okay, I'm okay. What about you, Bogart? Are you alright? More or less. Besides, this is my second time falling from that height. Though panting and out of breath, Bogart's flippant remarks were as cutting as ever. The girl gave a great sigh of relief, but that relief proved short-lived. Bogart's body was as cold as stone, and his breathing faint and shallow. We need to get, to a, get you to a medic right away, but I'm afraid everyone in the castle is... It's alright. I know all the medics are gone. I can hear the sounds of swords clashing. Flames spreading, and my soldiers' battle cries and death th throes. So the enemy has made it inside the castle. Yes, they have. By the time I got back, it was already too late. Why did you... Never mind. Just take me to the rear gate. I trust you can do that since you came all this way for me. Of course, but Habertrot still isn't... I'm right here. Jeez, I can't believe you just jumped out of out of the castle like that. Still, it did turn out to be the fastest way to escape, so I guess it all worked out. Oh, thank goodness. I guess I should have known you'd be light on your feet, Happy Cat. You know it. Plus, my spinning wheel here can actually fly a bit. Trust me, it's a lot more versatile than it looks. But don't call me Happy Cat. It makes me too happy. Right. Okay, I'm going to take Bogart to the rear gate. Would you cover me, Habertrot? Habitrot nodded, of course. The girl tried to lift Bogart's great bulk, only to realize that the magical energy that had been surging through her moments ago had vanished. But during her battle with Lancelot and the fall she had just taken, she had long since reached her limit. You fool, Tamlin or not, you're still half human. Stop, Bogart, you mustn't. You're in no condition to carry me. Please put me down. I can walk on my own. Don't be ridiculous. You don't even have the strength to escape my grip. Come, the rear gate is this way. Hurry. Bogart picked the girl up roughly and staggered forward as quickly as his bloody body could move, which was, of course, not very quick at all. But he kept on, slowly but surely, like a groom carrying his bride across the threshold. Oh man, it's even worse now! I think it's even worse now. There are more fairies packed in the front of the gate now than ever. Bogart, there's no way we can get close with the Queen's soldiers spotting us! Up to that point, Habitrot had been able to keep them away from the Queen's soldiers. But that luck was not to last. If they were to approach the gate now, all eyes would be on Bogart and the Child of Prophecy. You're right. It's fortunate that the gate is already open, but at this rate, Hmm? No, we can st still get out through the gate. If we stay here, it'll only be a matter of time until they find us, anyway. Thanks to you two, I've got, I've got a good deal of my strength back. I can run now. Some of my citizens can't make up their minds about whether they should stay or go. I have to help them escape. 
Keep your head down until we're outside, child of prophecy. I don't want you drawing attention to yourself. Huh? Oh, okay, if you say so. Alright, let's go. What are you fools doing? The castle has fallen. The battle on the main street is over. The queen's soldiers are heading this way. Escape through the rear gate and get to the twisted hole in the thistle hill. I trust you know what I mean by that, my fellow Sheffielders. Lord Bogart, you're alive? But, but Thistle Hill's Twisted Hole is a one-way road. That's where the night call... That's where I'm going. If any of you have any other prospects, you're free to take them. But don't stay here. Do you hear that? Gawain's Black Dogs, the main force of the Queen's Army, are headed this way. Yeah. At Bogart's command, the fairies began scrambling through the rear gate. As he carried the girl in his arms, Bogart himself continued to walk through the gate slowly, calmly. Setting an example to keep nearby fairies from panicking. I'm impressed, Bogart, but how is getting them outside going to help? Look behind us! The Queen's army is, really is hot on our heels! We'll catch up to these fairies in no time unless someone closes the gate. Huh? The gate's closing. Wow, Bogart, I'm impressed. Was it the setup to was it set up to do that automatically when you pass through it? Yes, I suppose. By some curious stroke of luck, it was. <laughs> Hearing Bogart speak through clenched teeth, the girl sensed something was amiss. She lifted her head and turned to look back at the now far off gate. Wait, please wait! Uh Ah! S sniff. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for rescuing me that day. Thank you for giving me a name. Thank you for always smiling at me. Still cradled in Bogart's arms. The girl gathered all her strength to wave back at the two fairies with the brightest smile she could muster. Wait, is it the two goblin guys? I can't believe it! Bogart's alive! Has that mash there with him? Then she must have made it back in time to save him! That's great! I can't believe she pulled it off! But, with the gate still open... Oh crap, even at this distance, Mash is looking pale, real pale! Lancelot must have gotten her! That, that's gotta be why Bogart's carrying her! But hey, at least now they can get away! What a relief! Come on, Rob, let's go after him. This is our chance to travel with MASH again. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Hell, maybe we can even make Bogart part of the gang. He'd make the perfect bodyguard. That way MASH's job would get a little easier, too. <laughs> I bet Winky wouldn't be too happy about it, though. But before we get to that, there's something else we've got to do first. Huh? What do you mean, Rob? Is it important? Yep, real important. And we're the only ones who can. I can't do it alone. No. It's something we have to do, Wag. Are you okay, Rob? Is something wrong? Whatever it is, you can tell me. You're my big brother. Whatever you want to do, I'm game. Thanks, Wag. Alright then, let's close the gate. Let's go close the gate. Don't worry, I still remember what you told me before. All we have to do is lower the levels to close the gate, and then destroy the safety mechanism so they can't be opened again. And I'll trap the Queen's soldiers inside for a good while. Huh? But, Rob, that mean we... Eh, now I got... gotcha. Okay, Rob, just leave it to me. But we can at least say goodbye, right? We wouldn't want Mash to worry about us. No, we wouldn't. And since the Queen's soldiers are gonna break into the guardhouses anyway, we might as well run up to the top of the gate. From there... Okay, good. I just made eye contact with Bogart. He's sharper than he looks, so I'm sure he'll figure out what's going on. What are you fools doing?! Bogart's resonant voice rang throughout the town square. While well, it did snap the fairies out of their panic, it also alerted the Queen's army to their location. Okay, let's do this, Wag. You know, I think this is the most excited it's been since we got the fairy Britain. You said it, Rob. We might have been in all sorts of trouble before, and life wasn't always easy here. 
But now, I'm real glad we came. So the two brothers closed the gate. It goes without saying that the Queen's soldiers were none too pleased. Once they found the fairies hiding in the guardhouses, the bear became the target of an army's frustration. The brothers saw Bogart shrinking into the distance, and in his arms, the girl looking back at them. Look, Rob, it's Mash! She sees us! Hey, Mash, I'm glad you're okay! I wish I was smart enough to say this better, but thanks for saving our lives! Thanks for everything! Rob looked with sadness and pride at his brother happily waving at the girl. The sound of boots echoed louder from downstairs. Soon, the brother's journey would be over. You know, putting your life on the line to protect what's important to you is kind of nice. Oh, screw it. Who cares about the Queen's soldiers? I'm gonna wave to her, too. Bye, Mash. Take care. Don't worry about us. You paid us back when then and then... Oh, you paid us back and then some... and then some long ago. Thanks again for saving us, prophecy or no prophecy. You're the weirdest knight I'd ever met, but I wouldn't have it any other way. This was the best trip I ever had. I'll never forget it. Aw, oh, man. I feel bad for these guys, man. Later, some of the Queen's knights went out to search for the escapees, but Bogart and the others were nowhere to be seen. And so, the Battle of Sheffield came to an end. With the voices of the two fairies waving up to their waving right up to their final moments. <sighs> wow, okay. Gotta do this to me game. Fragment four. Oh, it's just still the one more arrow left. Okay. The fairies who escaped from Sheffield evacuated to the cave, of, to a cave of the nor north of the city. The twisted hole of Thistle Hill, a dread cave known to home to be home to a single night call. Bogart said he readied the cave to serve as a shelter in the event of, a, of an emergency. He said he had defeated the night call himself and that it was now a perfectly safe hideout. Naturally, it contained stores of food for humans and fairies' favorite kind of oak trees. Bogart had done his duty as the Lord of Sheffield, but now... <coughs> Please, Lord Bogart, drink this. It's Thistle Morning Dew. It should at least keep you from getting parched. Bogart had gone still, his body horribly cold, the light drained from his eyes. His strength hadn't really returned. His march to safety had been one final act of defiance from the Lord of Sheffield. Child of Prophecy, are you there? Yes, Lord Bogart, I'm right here. Lord, huh? Well, that makes sense. There are other fairies here after all. This cave leads to Eastern Odvena, Britain's leyline caverns. They can take you to any other of any of the other cities without needing to set foot above ground. You can use them to make your escape. Guards, now that you've shaken the Queen's pursuers, you are to remain here for the time being. Whatever you do, do not ask Nokneriab for protection. She may be magnanim magnanimous to those who join, but she's ruthless to any who try to leave. She's little better than Morgan. If you seek help, go south. Find the round table. Lord Bogart, please, you need to rest. Don't worry. My fellow guards and I will keep the people of Sheffield safe. The people of Sheffield, huh? I built Sheffield out of anger at being banished from Norwich a hundred years ago. I never realized it until now, but I cared more about it than I realized. Being the lord of this domain and its people, I, it gave me a fiery sense of purpose. Yes, I did hate Morgan. I hated Woodwoes and Spriggan, too. I wanted to rule Fairy Britain to get revenge on all of them. But the truth is, I wanted to protect Norwich as well. Just, I wanted to save my people and live up to their expectations of me. And above all, I wanted to go back home, 
back to that city of sticky ocean wind and antique crafts fairies. How strange. I always thought I hated that city's restless atmosphere. Do you understand these odd feelings, child of prophecy? Yes, I do. You've described the hometown. Your hometown. Right from the start, you were rallying soldiers just so you could save Norwich, Lord Bogart. Huh. I must have been more transparent than I thought. <laughs> Tell me, child of prophecy, you who hates war, what happened to that iron cylinder? She shook her head from side to side, unsure if Bogart could even see her. I see. It seems I... It seems I unwittingly gave you an excuse to escape. I don't regret anything I did as Lord of Sheffield, but... Mash. Right to the end, I wanted. And so, Bogart quietly breathed his last. Even as the fairies grieved the loss of their lord, they were troubled by worry over what tomorrow may bring. But just when the mood in the cave couldn't get any more despondent, the lone girl raised her head with a sense of strong, the strong sense of purpose. Lady Mash, where are you going with your shield? Hey, she's not Bogart's wife anymore. So, what are you going to do now, Mash? I'm going to Norwich. Norwich, Lady Mash, by yourself? Yes, and because I may not, because I may be the child of prophecy, I'm going because Nor, and not because I may be the child of prophecy, I'm going because Norwich needs help. Right now, I want to save it more than anything. It feels like that's what I have to do. Then, then we'll come with you. It's our job to keep the child of prophecy safe. Don't be daft. Your guy's job is to protect the townspeople, right? I know how you feel, but you can't just abandon your post like that. Not unless you want Bogart haunting you from the afterlife. Well, well yes, that's true, but we can't send Lady Mash out alone. She won't be alone. I'll be going here with her. I mean, she won't be alone. I'm going with her. Plus, we have a guide right here. Is that cool? Mr. Wolf! I knew you would stay with me. The wolf turned without so much as a sound and began walking away. Deep into the dark, dark caverns that lead to the labyrinth known as Odvena. Huh? You mean we're leaving right now? Somebody's impatient. Then again, I guess time isn't exactly on our side. If we're going to take Odvena, it'll take us over a week to get to Norwich. And since there's no telling when this calamity pool might make a move, we don't have any time to rest. I suppose you're right. The old Venna is a dangerous place. We would only slow Lady Mash down if we went along. Good luck, Lady Mash, and thank you for bringing Lord Bogart back to us. Not at all. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Take care of yourselves, everyone. I'm off to save Norwich as the Knight of Sheffield. And so the girl's uh, journey truly began. While there were other dangers for her to overcome in Old Vena, those stories will have to wait for another time. The other child of prophecy would make her way through the labyrinth, befriending new fairies along the way to arrive in the faithful city of Norwich. What will happen there? You'll just have to see in the main story. Whew! Alright. We're getting near the end of section one, though, but... We're not going to finish it here. I think we're going to finish it later tomorrow. Or today, I guess. We're in the Autumn Forest still? Okay. Alrighty, folks, I believe we will call it a night here. Uh, yeah. I think, uh... So we just have, uh, chapters, uh, sections 8 and 9 to do, and then we'll be at, like, the time gate for Lost Belt 6 until the next part will come out pretty soon. That's why I want to finish this as soon as possible. In any event, though, I want to 
Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you guys again next time. Alright, take care.